Yo, what up OGs, grow 420 guide here, and welcome back to the Lone Clone series, day 56. Now we took off four days unintentionally from the Lone Clone series, but we are going to pick up right where we left off. And, um, and day 56 is actually going to be a two-part series. The first part is going to entitle a couple of, uh, of different things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about plant location, and we're going to talk about the recent invasion of caterpillars that we have uh, we are encountering right now and we are facing and it is uh, somewhat of a unfortunate I guess natural event the caterpillars out here in SoCal are just relentless towards crops and we were going so good staying away from caterpillars up until about day 50 where we made one crucial error and that one crucial error is, error is as simple as moving our plant to a different location and not accounting for all the variables that went down in, um, in moving our plant. Now, they are up on this glass tabletop here. And so let's take into account right now with a glass tabletop in Southern California, this thing gets extremely hot, heating up our pots quite tremendously. Even right now, it's morning time, and I'm getting a little warmth from the bag here. This pot is actually a little cooler because, as you can see, this plant is not sucking up its moisture as quick as our Yoda is over here. Um, so plant location, completely key in growing outdoors under um, environments and variables that you don't completely have all... 100% control of. Now our plants were sitting right down here when we uh, when we pruned and lollipopped our Yoda and our GDP and we also added a bit of soil to our plants down here. Now the key factor in this is we left our plants here overnight. We were going to come out here on day 53 and we were going to spray our plants with EcoSmart Pest Spray. And now, we actually did that. We did that off camera. Now, I know I said for the Lone Clone series, we were not going to do anything off camera. Now, I was going to record it, but the lighting was just awful. We actually did record it, and it you couldn't see anything, and it came out awful. So, I didn't want to waste your time, nor my time, with that upload. <clears throat> so, we're just going to be recapping it now. So, we left these plants out here, and we came out a day after. Now with our lawn being right here when we water our lawn there are caterpillars that live in lawns and now these caterpillars will turn into moths and when you mow your grass you'll notice that moths do fly out from your grass now that's because caterpillars live in here and when you water it or if you say add like pest spray to your yard or whatnot these caterpillars will flee out of here and we'll actually see caterpillars just on our cement here and uh, it makes for getting rid of them quite easy when they show themselves but that was where the problem lied OGs we had our plants directly right here and all those caterpillars needed to do was just climb out of that grass and climb up our pots to violate our plants and that's exactly what they did <clears throat> now it's uh, it's quite funny that we came out here that night and sprayed our EcoSmart pest spray on them and the next day I came out and we noticed signs of, uh, of stuff like this. Now you can see over here on this flower, we get, we're getting a little black. Now that's actually rotted flower from a caterpillar munching on it. Now it's really sad because this is our Yoda from our Lone Clone series. We gotta, we gotta update our OGs every day with this girl. And we can't have her getting munched on and looking like shit. So we, uh, we came up with a solution. Now I've heard a lot of good from, um, from this new product out. It's Monterey, what is it? Monterey Garden Insect Spray with uh, some Spinozad in it. Now we actually have that product right over here and we are gonna be incorporating this into the Lone Clone series and hopefully into our outdoor line. Now the key ingredient here that is supposedly the caterpillar killer is the spinosad right here. And that's that's what's gonna knock these pests out. I've heard it also knocks out um, thripes, white flies, a 
bunch, a bunch of pests. We can actually go through here. Actually, that's what we're going to be doing in uh, part two. We're going to be going through here. We're going to be targeting um, what plant that this... Well, we're working with a cannabis, obviously. It's not going to have a cannabis plant in here. So we'll get as close as we can to a uh, cannabis phenotypes. And um, and we'll read on our application on when to, when to apply it, how much to apply onto it, and what insects it does take care of. We're also going to be incorporating this Monterey uh, Spinosad with some neem oil as well and we will talk about more of that in part two and that's going to be later on this evening when the sun is going down and um when it'll be a better time to actually apply that application to our uh, our plants here so we've talked a little bit about plant location now plant location is so key and not just to pests but into um i guess into flower development into a very uh, healthy plant and, and it goes deep as into if you're gonna have a small plant or if you're going to have an extremely large plant plant location is very very important and very overlooked in growing now you guys can see I live in a suburban terrain area we got four walls all around we have a house here and we have trees all around so now this really limits the amount of sunlight coming in here and um, so we maybe get six hours a day maybe eight hours a day when it is at the peak of uh, I want to say the uh, the spring equinox right before it turns into the summer solstice we have about maybe eight hours of full light out here but now eight hours of full light in a SoCal desert climate can be very very harsh on a plant and uh, and so with my conditions out here we have to make sure that our plants receive a little bit of shade and um, just to ensure that they uh, they have a better climate growing environment I guess you could say the the temperature drops dramatically maybe by 10 15 degrees um, in a desert area just by moving into the shade so if we do that for our plant our plant is a lot happier and we don't have to water our plant as often. Now going back to plant location really quick, we talked about the disadvantages of having our plants on a glass tabletop here, how it gets really hot and can just absorb and just leach all of the moisture out from our pots and just increase a little more heat on, uh, on the surface of our pot here. And who knows what really that is doing to our roots. Now, supposedly they say, when the roots get to the edge of the pot and they do burn off it does promote more root growth and you get a bigger root ball and just a sturdier sturdier root foundation in general now who knows if that's really the case or not but the additional side to uh, to having our plants placed up on top of this tabletop here is um, is the caterpillars the caterpillars don't have easy access they can't just walk up crawl up our pot here and boom they have access to our plant the caterpillar has to work a whole lot harder. They have to first get themselves from the grass to the leg of the table. They have to get up the leg of the table. And then once they get up the leg of the table, they have to crawl on glass upside down, go around this rim, and, uh, and get up here. So the chances of that happening are a lot more slim than just having our plant located here on the ground. So that is the reason why they are still here. I don't know if we are going to be moving them or not. We will, uh, we will see after, uh, after day 57 and see how our pest spray does for our girls here. So we are going to hop into the invasion of this caterpillar infestation. We're going to start with our GDP here. And I've, um, I've taken a small look at her. Not really too in-depth as I have with the Yoda. And I was going to say before, prior to this, that our GDP looked like she didn't have any type of pests on her at all. No trace or uh, no tracks being shown. Now I'm actually going to teach you guys how to track caterpillars to their exact spot where they're chilling on the plant so you can find them a lot easier and a lot quicker. I know there might be some growers out there that have a hard time finding caterpillars and we actually just spotted one. Look at that. Just talking about them. And, um, and they blend in. They blend in so very well. And that creates for, uh, 
finding them even harsher. Now, I'm sorry about being cruel on camera, um, but yes, we did just pop that caterpillar. Caterpillars are extremely bad, and actually, by me tossing it into the yard, that's actually bad too, um, because we have small dogs. If the small dog was to eat the carcass of the caterpillar, it could get sick. It is a very acidic um, insect, and it can mess with a small dog's um, stomach quite easily. Now, what made me realize that there was a caterpillar on this plant was the signs of poop on this flower here. Now, if you guys can see the black specks spotted within the calyxes stuck to the trichomes, that's what led me to believe that there was a caterpillar on this plant somewhere. And now, if you find one caterpillar on the plant, you are bound to find five times the amount of that. And that's just... We're being nice about that. There's probably maybe about 20 times the amount of that on here being little larvae or just very, very small caterpillars within the middle of our flowers here. Now the reason being caterpillars are so destructive to not just a cannabis plant, but really any crop is, uh, let's get rid of this leaf here, is because a caterpillar can eat 15 times its body weight in a single day. And now, that is pretty, pretty destructive, especially as the caterpillars grow in size. They will literally consume flowers overnight. You'll come outside to see half of your flower just consumed. So, we are going to track a couple of caterpillars on our Yoda here. And then we are going to end this part. Now, the part one of day 56 was really just showing our plants, showing how beautiful they look from the pruning and how much the pruning has done for our plant here. She actually looks a whole lot more healthier. Now the lower leaves were kind of drooping on her just because they were old and um, not, not producing all that much energy but consuming a bunch of energy. So by getting off that older growth we've uh, We've allowed more sunlight to penetrate her lower flowers here. We've also created for a better, uh, a better airflow through her canopy here. And, um, and we've also just gotten rid of growth that doesn't need to be there. Now the sun seems to be coming out. The skies are a little gray because of Hurricane Norbert. I believe that's the name of it. Wreaking havoc over here on the west coast giving us super humid days and really high temperature 100 degree days out here in uh, Southern California. But the, the high humidity is actually creating for these plants to kind of thrive under those humid jungle-like conditions. And the flowers are just kind of loving it. They're not used to it. They're used to this dry desert heat out here. And I'm totally rambling. I forgot that we were gonna go on a hunt for caterpillars here. So let's, let's get to that. Now what I first look for is the most obvious sign, and that's going to be damage to the leaf. It's a very distinct mark when you notice a caterpillar has eaten away at a leaf. And right here, we have some distinct markings. Let's see if we have them anywhere else. They're really not showing too much damage done to the fan leaves here, which actually makes our job a whole lot harder. Because typically you'll find the caterpillars on the inside of your flowers, maybe sometimes on the undersides of your fan leaves here, and um, sometimes on the stem of your branches. Now when you don't see any leaves that are damaged from them consuming 15 times their body weight a day, then you want to move on to the next sign, which is going to be them defecating on your plant and leaving behind fecal matter. Now this is going to be a good example over here, if we can just get this camera to adjust for us. I totally have it on the wrong setting and I didn't realize that until it was too late and we hit record. And I don't really want to stop the video to uh, readjust the settings, let's just hope that it comes out in post-production. So. I'm hoping you guys can see all of that rotted flower along with the fecal matter 
within those black pellets of poop on the sugar leaves stuck to our trichomes just a horrible mess so if you find either a damaged leaf or fecal matter you know you're getting close and now all you need to do next is wherever that fecal matter is located you need to start digging in your flower you want to gently pull apart your flower and oh my god that's disgusting oh my god do you see all that freaking poop in there so there is definitely going to be uh, a caterpillar in here that's just so disheartening and this is why OGs I do not really grow outdoors it is such such a skill to growing outdoors it's very hard it's so much harder than growing indoors because of these uncontrolled variables now I'm hoping with this new pest spray and this Monterey uh, spinozad that we are able to get these caterpillars under control so we can experiment with some more outdoor grows because it is just it's wonderful fun and it's free energy so why not now we are looking for a caterpillar still and so I'm actually going to uh, set this camera up on the tripod here. Give me a second to readjust it. Bring this down. And I'm going to zoom in while I use both my hands to, uh, to look in this flower. And hopefully we can find something. Hmm, nothing there. I know there's one in here because of all of this nasty shit just ripped apart look at this let me let me move this a little closer this caterpillar is completely ripped apart the inside structure of our yoda here completely has demolished it even laying egg sacs within ah, that's just awful so awful so we have yet to find a caterpillar on this flower. I know there's one in here. Now I was out here a little earlier and I did happen to pull off two caterpillars that I just happened to notice on this plant. Might have been the one on this branch. But we're going to keep looking because I know we're going to find one here. And so all you do is you just kind of gently pull apart your flowers here. And the caterpillars like to hide inside. Eating from the inside out. So you really don't know they're causing damage until the damage has been caused. And by that time it is just too late to move on to this flower over here. Hopefully I have better luck finding one of these pesty assholes. This flower actually looks somewhat clean compared to actually it looks very clean compared to the last flower we are looking in now let me get this camera off the tripod so you guys can see how clean this flower is compared to this flower and they're literally sitting right next to it's kind of a, a miracle the caterpillar hasn't worked his way over here yet you can see our calyxes are nice and green and all put together still. No bud rot, no nothing that's been chomped off. No fecal matter within. Very clean plant. That's how it should look. But with this invasion going on, that is not the case. It's kind of hard. I, I keep looking between the, the viewfinder and real life and it's just it's hard to find these gosh darn caterpillars there's none in there i know you're here it's like the worst game of hide and seek all right i'm just gonna give up oh ho, ho, right as i say that look at that and he's actually on the fan leaf Let's see, he's working his way to this flower to munch on it. Where'd you go? Come here. So we're just going to leave him on our notes of what we're talking about in Day 56 Long Clone Series. Take care of him later. 
Uh, let's see. I know there's going to be more down here. Maybe we can get a better look. Slowly scanning the undersides of the flowers. I see a lot of poo up in here. Where are you at, caterpillars? Where are you? Now, caterpillars don't like loud noises either, so the quieter you are, the easier it is to find these guys. I'm actually just kidding. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> hmm. Alright, Caterpillar, we got one of you. You got like five of my flowers. So I think as of now, I'm losing this war against you and your race of trichome eating species. I don't even know. Let's see, I've got some more rot down here. Man, it's so disheartening and just so sad to see your baby just being devoured alive, literally. Alright, that was a good sized caterpillar we have. We're probably overlooking these smaller ones that are inside of our flowers. We're really trying to give this plant a good detailed look. Fan leaves keep blocking your guys' view. Man, there's just poop scattered everywhere. That's so sad. But, tonight, in the evening time, we are going to, uh... We're going to take control of this war here against these caterpillars. And we are going to, uh... Going to unleash our, uh our weapon of mass destruction on them, hopefully, hopefully, because uh, the EcoSmart just only brought them to our plant. We sprayed that on day 53, literally came out the next day, and boom, caterpillars were all over the flowers. There's fecal matter everywhere, and it was just really, really disheartening, especially believing in the EcoSmart and it totally failing on us. So I'm not quite sure about that pest spray. We're gonna give this one a try and hopefully it works a whole lot better. Let's give this, this flower one good look over. I don't think we really hit this flower, did we? Maybe not, I don't know. I think we've hit all of them. All right, so we got the one caterpillar. The hunt still continues, OGs. We will be back for caterpillar blood. And it's kind of amazing how the signs on the GDP are just... We only saw a little bit of the fecal matter on that one flower. I don't even remember what flower... Oh, right here. Right there. I wonder if we can find a caterpillar on this bud. I wonder. I bet... Like, I overlooked one, and there's, like, one on camera, and all my OGs are like, Grove Forge, what a guy that's right there! How do you not see him? And I'm gonna go back in post-production and see that, and just be like, wow, he was right there! How did I miss him? Because I'm... I'm not finding these guys. Let's see. And it doesn't help that our GDP is just this crazy jungle gem of a plant. It goes up and down and all around and then sideways and then left and right. Alright, so that's all I got for part one, OGs. I know this video was a little longer than expected. Maybe a little more boring than expected too. I expected to find a lot more caterpillars than we did. We did find the two, the one on the Yoda and the one on the GDP. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment and like and as always, OGs, Subscribe and stay tuned for part two where we uh, we mix up our Monterey insect spray along with our neem oil. We come out here and we uh, we spray down our lovely flowers over here and we will be back on day 57 to see how they did for our girls here. So uh, stay tuned for part two. It will most likely be uploaded a little later tonight, most likely around 10 p.m. 
uh, Pacific Standard Time. So peace out, OGs. I will see you then.